Hi Orchid lovers, welcome back to Orchid 101. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about re-energizing or trying to help um, an orchid that is severely in need. The root systems are not as great and they may just need to be re um, just need to be helped out a little bit. So as you can see here in my video, I received these um, two orchids today. They were gifted to me, um, or better yet, they were given to me to adopt by somebody at my job who felt like they were not to the best of their abilities in their care and I was actually really surprised because the person who gave them to me just felt like they were not taking care of them in the west in the best way but it had new growth it had a, a spike um, on this one it has a spike coming out but as you can tell the root system is just really really um, struggling it has a little bit of root rot right there you know um, there's hardly any roots on this so today we are just going to try to help this orchid out and I'm also going to be potting these in a little bit of a different kind of setup than what I normally do. So I just want to kind of give you guys a little bit of an overview of that as well and I just want to show you guys how I do that and just kind of um, record myself while I do that so you guys can see what you know the steps that I take and all of that. And then also with this one. It seems like he also was having the same issue. You know, um, the root system is just very, very poor here. There's a lot of dead, dry roots, very, you know, paper-like roots. Um, again, he was having, you know, some new growth going on here. There's also a spike that at one point in time, it looks like he may have cut down and a new spike has been growing and it does have you know what looks to be some buds might be coming out soon but as far as the roots go it's very very um it's struggling very very bad and you can tell by the leaves they're just very very soft very very dehydrated um just very floppy there's just no consistency to them they're not very stiff very tough so we're just going to try to give these philanopsis here um a little bit of a push we're going to try to uh give them some slow release fertilizer as well and see if we can just give them a little bit more of an ump and a push so that they can do a little bit better and hopefully in my care we can help them out so the first thing i'm going to go ahead and do here is i'm going to go ahead and start cutting away all of the dead roots any roots that i see um that are not really going to survive so i'm going to start off with one orchid first and i have already sterilized my tools here and anytime you do this as i mentioned in all of my other repotting videos make sure you guys sterilize all of the tools that you guys use so we are just going to start cutting away any and all tools I mean, I'm sorry, um, we're going to start cutting away any and all roots that we see that may not be very healthy. And we're going to check that by pressing on the root. We're going to see if they have any consistency to them. Uh, we are going to see if, you know, they are, they feel paperly, paper-like, if they feel mushy, if they feel like they're just coming apart so anything like that so i think it has a really nice aerial root right here so that's a good sign and then it does have two nice roots right here so hopefully it does have a nice root growing right here i don't know if you guys can see it so hopefully this one is actually you know i think like with some you know love and care i think it'll do a little bit 
good for it. The gentleman that um, gave me these, I feel bad because he brought them to me in a plastic like grocery bag, one that you would just get at the store and it was just like covered in media and the you know the orchids were just kind of buried in it so it just looks like he it just looked like and he was an older gentleman so he probably didn't know um it just looked like he had just kind of dumped the pot in the bag and just carried it over to me um so i kind of feel bad he probably didn't know how to properly take care of them so it's okay you know i feel really it makes me feel really nice that somebody would give me their orchids to care for so hopefully i can make this um bloom for him and survive and then eventually if if i make it survive and i make it bloom from him for him i'll probably give it back to him so that he can have it and um in, in a healthy back in a healthy condition so I think this one is all, um, those are all the roots that we can go ahead and remove from it. Um, I just took off, as you can see, a couple of them here. So my next step is now, I'm just going to pour a little bit of hydrogen peroxide over the roots just to kind of disinfect anything. I just want to make sure that, you know, um, nothing was there's no bugs no um fungus no bacteria no nothing like that on this orchid just to be on the safe side because uh, i don't know you know what kind of environment it came from so i'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of hydrogen peroxide on all these roots and just make sure that it, it is nice and clean I'm just gonna let that kind of sit there and simmer for a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this one. Now this one does have a little bit of a more tangled mix of roots. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the same. I just think he had it in um, a lot of media. It was probably suffocating and he was probably watering it way too much, which is normal for people who don't know how to really take care of orchids. I mean, I have seen that before where they just water them too much and then they don't give it the proper sunlight. So they don't give the media enough time to dry before they, water them again so unfortunately it's something really common and it's also one of the easiest ways to you know kill off an orchid so it's not the nicest way to kill off an orchid but it is the most common so i think we got this one had a lot of roots. so as you can tell this one had quite a little bit more damaged roots that we removed and that we were left with. I mean, it had a little bit more good roots than the last one, but it had a lot of damaged roots too. And I think he said he had these potted together. So what also may be happening is that he, um, they might have been, you know, sucking each other's energy and nutrients away from each other. It's not recommended to pot orchids that are not from the same like family or the same mother plant together because they sometimes don't mingle together, you know, like how can I explain it in layman's term? They 
they sometimes they just don't do well together they feed off each other and one may pull more energy and more nutrients from the other and at the same time kill the other versus you know so it does look like that may be happening here where this one may have been getting a little bit more nutrients than this one if they were potted together because this one is left with almost zero roots and this one has a little bit more roots plus the spike is a little bit longer and it's starting to grow a little bit of you know some buds so if he did have them potted together I think that's what might be happening might have happened is that this one was feeding off of all the energy that this one might have had so that's why you don't see that many roots on this one so you know that's why sometimes it's just really not recommended to pot them together unless they are from the same mother plant or from the same batch of plants that were originally created together you know um some people do like to plant them together i did make a video on um two phalaenopsis orchids that i did plant, uh, pot together as an um an arrangement to decorate for the holidays but you know luckily for me those two are doing really really nicely together so it works sometimes sometimes it doesn't you know it just all depends on the orchid and how they like each other and and you know and all that it's almost like putting two siblings in a room together they might either kill themselves to death or they might get along really nicely so it just depends so while these sit here just to kind of um, suck in all of that hydrogen peroxide i'm gonna go ahead and set up the pots now the pots that i'm gonna use today are gonna be self-watering pots now i have used these pots in the past and I have included them in some of my videos but um, I'm gonna put these in these kind of pots this time because I want these to get as much water as possible and I also am not going to be able to water them as often as I have been able to in the past um, because I'm gonna have a light a slight change in my schedule so in order for these to receive the proper water that they need right now because of the distress that they're in, I want to put them in this um, type of setup. So these normally come with this, um, they come with the reservoir. As I mentioned in my previous video, if you guys all watched that, they come with a reservoir which lets the water sit in here and then you put the inner pot in here um, and then the string goes through the pot which sucks in the water and allows the plant to feed off the water um, that the string holds and the strings as you can tell they're just like a little almost like a little shoelace type material very thin material I've learned that this doesn't really I, how can I put it this doesn't really suck in as much water as I would like so I have kind of modified this setup a little bit as far as the string goes and i have started to cut up microfiber cloths because i feel like the microfiber just holds in much more water and much more moisture so i cut strips of microfiber and i use the microfiber strips instead of the string that the pots originally come with so as you can tell there's a little hole right there and i'm just going to stick the microfiber through the hole and um, put it through and i'm going to use the microfiber instead of the string and it's just going to hold a little bit you know more moisture than the actual string that it comes with so it's going to look something like that you know the microfiber is going to sit in the pot and then the rest of the microfiber is going to sit outside of the pot in the reservoir with the water and it's going to just suck in the water so that's what it's going to look like so i'm just going to do this you know set it up for both pots while that's sitting there All right. 
And then the media that I will be using for this is going to be a mixture of sphagnum moss and small sized bark. Um, and the reason why I want the small bark is because I want it to be very compact to hold in more moisture than normal. This uh, bark actually comes in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. I currently have used the small and the media. I'm sorry, the small and the large um, because I just like to kind of switch back and forth between my orchids depending on their need for moisture and air. So I'm going to go ahead and use the small on these orchids. I want them to be kind of, you know, tight. I don't want them to be too loose in the pot and I also don't need them to have too much airflow right now because they don't have a lot of roots and I want them to stay a little bit more moist um, and you know keep more moisture in the pot. So I'm going to use this with a mixture of the sphagnum moss and we're going to pop this in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just going to put a little bit of the sphagnum moss here at the bottom. And it's just a little tiny bit. Just to kind of make like a little bed. And then a little bit of the bark. Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and take the first plant. I'm going to try to position her right in the middle there and just fill her in all around with a mixture of both with sphagnum moss and the bark. So just kind of throwing both of those in there. And I just want them to be, you know, really snug in there. Oh, hang on. I'm sorry, guys. I forgot to do one thing that I wanted to do. So I'm actually going to take out some of this because I did want to add one more thing in here. And I forgot. I kind of left, I left it kind of halfway because I forgot. I'm going to add some slow release fertilizer in the middle there just so that they get a little bit of that nutrition that they need since they are struggling just a little bit so just about a teaspoon of the slow release fertilizer there and then i'm going to be putting the rest of that bark back in there with the sphagnum moss Okay, so there we have it. Now I am going to So I'm just gonna go ahead and first run a little bit of water through it to just kind of get everything wet. And then before it empties out everything, I'm just going to put it right in the reservoir. And there you go. Now the reservoir, as you can tell, doesn't have enough water. So using the little hole there for the water, I'm just going to put a little tiny bit more water for it. And there we go. And that's what it should look like right now so hopefully this setup works for this orchid and let's go ahead and move on to the next one we're gonna do the same technique we are 
going to go ahead and grab her, place her there in the middle. And this one did have a little bit more roots, so hopefully she will stay a little bit more stable. Put a little bit more media in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the slow release fertilizer. And then fill it up with the rest of the media there. Give it a good soak and put it in the reservoir and again it's not enough water so I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit more through the water hole here. And there you have it. So hopefully again this setup works for these two lovely girls and they start thriving. Um, one last thing I will do and this is optional for you guys, but I do like to, um, you know, do this to all of my orchids because I think it's important, especially if you have a big collection of orchids is labeling them now i don't know what kind of orchids these are they were gifted to me with no name so for the meantime they will be no id philanopsis and once they bloom i will be able to tell hopefully what kind of orchids they are but for the meantime they will be no id Philanopsis, and on the back, I'm gonna put repotted on O two O nine twenty twenty one. So there you go. No ID Philanopsis, repotted O two. 09 2021 just to remind myself when I potted this orchid and what happened to it so there you guys have it that's what it's supposed to look like and the reservoir there looks pretty filled and so I will definitely keep you guys updated as I do with most of my um, you know orchids and hopefully these will do good in my care i'm very excited to see their progress and like i said earlier if they do good and they bloom i might return them back to their original owner so that he can go ahead and take care of them from there on so thank you guys for watching as always like and subscribe so that you can enjoy the rest of my videos or you can see all the new stuff that i post I do try to post as frequently as I can. Follow us on Facebook. We do have a Facebook channel. I have posted the link down below in the description. And again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.